Hello, everybody, and thank you very much for joining us today um, for this special School of Study webinar. Um, this is all about Hertfordshire Law School, um, and we're going to be taking you through quite a lot of information. Um, the session is recorded. It's nothing to worry about. It's just so we can share the recording with you later as well. So if your internet does drop out, you'll be able to watch it back later too. Um, so I'm just going to introduce our panelists. So you've got me, I'm Kat, and I work in the International Office. Hi everybody, my name's Jess and I work with Kat in the International Office. Oh, sorry Liz, I, I can't hear you, sorry. Um, okay, is it oh, working? Perfect, yes, yes I can sorry. hear you now, <laughs> thank you. Okay, um, hi everybody, my name is Liz and I'm the Associate Dean of International and Development at Hertfordshire Law School. Excellent, thank you. So we're going to be taking you through the information today. Um, now, there is a few bits that we will cover. So you'll have an introduction to Hertfordshire Law School. After that, we'll have a look at some start of term prep. So some things that you can be doing now um, to help you get to that stage. And then we're going to go to Q&A. Now, there is a Q&A button on your screen. So if you do want to ask any questions, please put them in that box there because sometimes if you use the chat um, they can get lost in the chat. Um, you will be able to see other attendees questions as well so you can feel free to have a look at those. You can upvote questions if somebody's got the same question as you. Now we're just going to see who we've got in the room today so you might have some future classmates here with you. Um, so we're going to do a poll. So which subject will you be studying when you come to Hearts in September? Now I'm going to launch the poll so this should pop up on your screen as well. So you can see there you've got a few different options. You might be coming to do the undergraduate LLB. You might be coming to do your LLM for your master's in law. You might be coming to do the bar practice, the legal practice, business law, criminal justice, international commercial law, international human rights law or intellectual property and information law so feel free to take part it's just so we can see who we've got in the room see if you've got any fellow classmates as well i can see about half of you um, have inputted your answer which is brilliant so i'll just leave that open for another moment so that the others can have a go as well This is excellent. So for those of you who are just joining the session now, we've just launched a poll so that you can take part and see which subject you'll be studying at Hearts in September. Um, I'm going to close the polling in just a moment as we've had nearly everybody submit their answers and then we'll have a look at these together as well. OK, so if you are just going to submit your answer, um, press it now because I'm going to close the poll. Excellent. So we'll share these results on screen so we can see we've got a nice mix of people there. A um, few of you for the undergraduate LLB, a few of you for the LLM, a few for bar practice, business law, um, international commercial law as well, and a few other topics as well. So brilliant. We've got a really nice mix in the room. OK, so I'm going to pass to my colleague Liz now, who's going to tell you a little bit more about the school. Can you hear me? Perfect. Yes. OK, um, thanks, Kat. OK, so um, Hertfordshire Law School then. So I can see that you've all applied for um, different programmes of study. Um, Kat, can we move to the next slide, please? Yeah. So just wanted to give you a little bit of an overview of what life is like at Hertfordshire Law School. So the picture here in the screen is actually our law court building, which is the home of Hertfordshire Law School. And a lot of our teaching does take place in this building, although not all of it. Um, so Hertfordshire Law School, we are a team of academics, practicing lawyers, barristers and solicitors. We have a really multicultural department, uh, UK um, qualified lawyers, as well as international qualified lawyers and international academics. And all of our courses, both undergraduate and postgraduate courses, have been designed to meet the demands of today's legal profession. So whether that is someone who wants to go into practice in the UK or take that experience and go into professional practice in your own countries. 
all of our programs have what we term a strong experiential and skill focused approach. So we look at law in the context of skills. So if you want to go into any professional context, whether that be a lawyer or say management, the skills that you develop on this program are going to be absolutely valuable to you. It also makes the study of law more exciting. So when you're learning um, as a first year about contract law, learning and, and looking Looking at that in the context of a proper contract is much more real and authentic and helps you remember some of those core legal principles. Now, as a school, we've existed for over 40 years and we have a really, really positive relationship with the uh, um, professions in the UK. And a lot of our alumni have gone on to very successful careers. And in fact, our building itself is uh, was renamed last year uh, after Grace Anonawu, who was um, uh, or who is sorry, an alumni of the university and is currently second in charge of the UK Criminal Crown Prosecution Service. So a really, really highly successful alumni of ours. Now, in terms of our learning formats, we operate what is called a flip classroom model. So for a lot of our programmes, we record our lectures in advance and they are available to students on our VLE, which is we, is a cam, called Canvas. And the idea is that you watch these lectures in advance. And this is a particular change for those starting at the undergraduate level where perhaps you might have been used to school or college where they do a little bit more teaching from the front and then you go away and do homework. So this is very much you do a lot of the preparation. And the advantage of that is that you get all that knowledge, you supplement the recorded lectures with your own reading and you get all of that knowledge in advance of attending your on campus class so that we can then maximise that time that you have with a member of staff. So our weekly seminars and they might they tend to be two hour seminars are all about taking that knowledge clarifying any areas that um, are unclear or there's some problems with, but also about applying the law. So looking at it in a very real context. And it really, really gets that law, brings that law to life. So we, we find that this is a really beneficial format for our students. Now, aside from the learning format, we also have several co-curricular activities which students can join and run alongside their studies. So, for example, we're going to some of those later. We have a very successful trial advocacy uh, co-curricular, which runs within our courtroom within the law court building. Next slide, slide please. So these are pictures of our full size scaled replica courtroom. It's fully AV'd. Um, so really important for the bar practice course, but all of our programmes get an opportunity to do um, and have some experience in there, whether it be within the curriculum itself or as part of the co-curricular series. So it's a great experience. It's got really good acoustics. We've been assured by barristers that it is really a, a good experience for learning how to project your voice and act in court. Now, the school itself puts in lots of teams for both national and international competitions, such as mooting, trial advocacy, uh, client interviewing. And we are again hosting this year the uh, Blackstones National Trial Advocacy Competition, which will be run from our courtroom here. Next slide, please. Oh, and this is just a little bit of a video of the courtroom in action. obliged to counsel for both the appellant, Mr. Pats, and the respondent, the Crown, for their competent and eloquent submissions. This is not an easy case. The appellant contends the trial judge was wrong in his assessment of the law, and the respondent argues the trial judge's interpretation of the legal test was correct. For the record, the appeal is allowed, the conviction quashed, and the appellant free to go. Okay guys, class dismissed. Thank you very much indeed. Don't forget, next week there's an examination. Chapters 21 to 22 might be quite helpful.
Now, obviously, that's, that's obviously slightly dramatised, but it does give you a picture of the real um, authentic experience we have. And for those students joining our bar practice programme, a lot of your sessions will take place in the courtroom where you get to really drill down and hone those advocacy skills. Now, talking a little bit about the experience of you when you get to Hertfordshire Law School. So as I've mentioned, all of our modules blend knowledge and skills, so to make them more authentic. There's also the opportunity for students to get involved in um, our award winning pro bono and Lord clinic. And uh, we're very proud of the opportunities that we provide to the community and also to students who can get involved in that. We, as I said, have a range of co-curricular courses to develop further your skills and employability. And they're a really good opportunity as well to socialise and meet other people, not just on your course, but also across uh, the law school. So we do have a range of social events. They do vary from year to year. But this year, for example, we had a cultural diversity day where students from all of the different cultures uh, across across the globe came together, put on performances ranging from dancing to a drama performance to a cello performance. And they come together and uh, celebrate the cultural diversity. And it's a lovely event um, and very, very popular. We have other events as well that we do throughout the year to enhance and really bring everyone together. In terms of the support that we provide you, it's structured support from day one. Uh, so it varies depending on your level of study. So as a first year undergraduate um, student, you get a little bit more personal tutoring because you're embarking on higher education for the first time. Um, but as you move further up the the chain, so, so to speak, you get uh, you still get personal tutoring, but it might not be so much one to one, but more group opportunities for you. Uh, we have also an international student support tutor who is there as that first port of call to aid our international students and also help bring opportunities to international students in terms of socialising and raising any concerns and questions that international students might have back to the academic staff. Uh, within the school itself, we have a, uh, our own employability lead that will um, organises things like um, careers events on campus so if you're looking to work or get work in the UK afterwards then they will bring the police on board various law firms chambers um, and lots of different opportunities to explore there we also have quite a successful uh, talking program so lots of uh, alumni and professionals across the UK will come in and talk to our students about the different opportunities that um, might exist out there in the workplace, but also about their own experiences so that you can see what is on offer and learn from them. Next slide, please. So talking a little bit more about our pro bono clinic. So Hertfordshire Law Clinic opened about four or five years ago and it's been extremely successful. We operate um, or offer um, advice in there's several areas, a really, really important family law clinic. But we also do intellectual property, company and employment law. And the idea is that students will work alongside experienced and qualified lawyers in, for example, drafting letters, maybe offering some basic advice um, and so on. Now, we won two awards when we first launched in 2020. We were very proud of that because obviously that was during COVID. And then last year, we also won a couple of awards, best com highly commended in the best contribution by law school and winner for a team of students um, in the Attorney General's Pro Bono Awards as well. One of the big projects that we do, and we encourage students to really get involved in this, is our street law project. And this is a great opportunity for students to get together in a small group to design and deliver interactive presentations to the community. And more often than not, it's to school children. So they might go off into a school, say, of what we A level students, 16 to 18 year olds, and deliver a legal talk about stop and search in the UK. So it's really, really good experience in terms of honing your legal research skills, your presentation skills, working collaboratively with other uh, members of your of the law school. And all of this is basically work experience at no extra cost. So it's part of your course fees. And we do really encourage students to get involved as much as they possibly can in the opportunities that we put forward. Next slide, please.
So obviously engagement and attendance is absolutely vital. So we, we want you to be ready to start your course on the date that you are supposed to start. So our, our programs start quite early. So the bar practice program starts in the first week of September and it's a, as a really intensive course, you need to be ready to go the minute you um, land almost effectively. Uh, the LLB is a couple of weeks, a week later and the LLM is a week after that. So all start in September, but we really need you to be ready to go uh, on your very first day. Now we do provide a, a really good induction package. Obviously there is what the university offers and what the international office will offer, but within the school itself, we run in induction programs, we term connections. And as the name suggests, it's about building connections both within your own peer group, but also with the faculty and also with law. So for first year undergraduates, we introduce you to some of the key legal skills that you need early on, as well as the English legal system. Uh, for postgraduates, we again will introduce you to some of your key research skills um, and uh, and some of the, the study skills that you will need to get going with your modules. For postgraduate students, please do look out for the emails that come from faculty um, in August asking you to select your modules. It's really, really important that you do this at the first opportunity so that when you do arrive, that timetable is practically waiting for you um, and you're guaranteed a space on that particular module. We do monitor engagement with your studies. We're looking for a, a, at least 80%. Uh, and that is really for your own good, um, aside from any, obviously, uh, requirements that the UK government put down. But you know, success correlates with being in the classroom. You know, you can read so much, you can listen to so much. But if you've got, you can't check your understanding, you can't check how you're applying things successfully if you're not in a classroom, checking that with a, with a member of staff. And you really don't want to be doing that when you submit your assessments. You want your assessments to get the highest grades you possibly can. And so all of that learning that you do in the classroom is obviously helping to prepare you for that. So uh, we, we will look at engagement and we will follow up and have a chat with you if there is a problem with your engagement as to how we can help you if there are any particular problems. Now, what we would say to international students, ensure you're living with an easy commuter campus so that you can attend all sessions. Uh, there's plenty of university accommodation and I'm sure uh, Kat will talk to you about that later on. Um, but it is really literally within easy commute. Some of the accommodation is right next door to the law court building. So you can almost roll out of bed and, and pop into your classes. And I, I would really recommend that you stay as close to campus as possible so that you can maximise your time, not just in your classes, but also getting involved in the co-curricular and also the social side of university. Next slide, please. Now, the LLB itself is, is accredited, so it covers the seven foundations of legal knowledge, which is recognised and required by the Bar Standards Board. And it's still recognised as a qualifying law degree for the purposes of the Solicitor's Regulation Authority. So the LLM and the Postgraduate Diploma in Bar Practice is uh, accredited and recognised uh, as the vocational stage of Bar Practice by the Bar Standards Board. And all of our programmes uh, provide uh, you know a good step into a next job, whether that be further academic study, whether that be going into some sort of legal career or management career or um, politics, for example. Um, you can see here as well, there's a lot of support. So careers and employment team provide four years of support for all of our graduates. And there are various things like the student circus, uh, which helps students, international students on a student visa. We do have our dedicated law school uh, employability lead uh, who oversees all our co-curricular and career enhancing opportunities. We also have a school placement officer who will help students who want to go out on placement. So both uh, the undergraduate and the postgraduate have opportunities to go out on placement. Next slide, please. For the past nearly 14 years, I've worked in various parts of the court service. It's a place I never dreamed I would be when I was at Hertfordshire. The support that Hertfordshire gave was the foundation of me becoming a banking finance cross-border lawyer. 
I started working in the family law firm and there was a point that I felt without a legal qualification I'm not going to grow anymore and my father is a lawyer and uh, he's my role model so I, I thought I'd do a law degree. The School of Law, Criminology and Political Science has offered a wide range of LLB law degrees for the last 20 years. We have evolved our degrees to take account of the needs of the individual student and of the legal profession. So whether you're interested in commercial law, government and politics, criminal justice or the law in general, we have you covered. We had tutors who were actually practicing lawyers, practicing solicitors. It gave us a good exposure of the profession after the university, after graduating. We are always innovating in terms of our programs and the level of student support we offer. When it comes to future-proofing your studies, we are one of the only providers to offer a range of qualifications that sit alongside your law degree. I think one of the key things about Hertfordshire is that we were encouraged to think more broadly, not just in terms of the core subjects, but also about other opportunities to get involved uh, at the university. So I think that gave us a chance to think more widely than just the degree, which was always encouraged and is really important. It gave me an opportunity to get a job. It was close enough to London, so I was able to get practical legal experience in London. But there's also support there to think more broadly and think about how you might use your, your law degree for a whole variety of other careers as, as I have. You want a degree that offers you both an excellent learning environment, future proves your qualifications and enables you to be highly employable in whatever career path you choose. Our constant innovation will be the foundation of your success. So another little video there just to give you um, a taste of what life is like at the law school. Now, just a key reminder for the few of you um, on the LLM Bar Practice Programme that you must join an inner of court if you haven't already at least 12 weeks before the start of the course. So uh, if you haven't already got that application into one of the inns, please do so now. It's vitally important and it is a requirement of the Bar Standards Board. Next slide, please. OK, over to Kat. Brilliant. Thanks so much, Liz. Um, so much useful information in there, everyone. As we've said, we are going to record the session. So if you do want to rewatch any parts as well, you'll be able to do that soon, shortly. Um, now, just before we go to the q and I'm just going to run you through some tips for preparing for the start of term. So other things you can do now as well. Um, now, we've got a lot of different people in the audience today. You'll all be in a different place for your application journey. Um, once you've met all your conditions and paid your deposit, um, if admissions require anything additional from you, like a sponsorship interview or financial checks, they'll send you an email confirming what you need to do. They'll give you the guidance on that as well. So keep an eye on your emails. But once you've completed everything, that's when you're at CAS stage. Now, the team are working very hard to get everyone to CAS stage and CAS will be issued as soon as possible as well. Um, so you might see that you're on the, the squiggle line journey on the right hand side of the screen as well. So some of you might still be submitting your documents to clear your conditions. Some of you might have recently submitted your offer and you're waiting to hear back from admissions. And some of you might be all the way down at where you're waiting for your CAS as well. You've still got plenty of time, so please don't worry. Just keep an eye on your emails as admissions will tell you what to do next. Now, we're just going to do another poll here for you. So before I start telling you about some of the things you will get to experience at start of term, we just want to check if you've already maybe read up on a few things and if there's anything that you're excited about. So other than all your course related activities, um, we just want to know what activity are you most looking forward to participating in outside of your course as well. So you might find there's some things that you learn about today that you weren't aware of before the session. So I'm launching that poll now. Um, so again, you've got multiple choice questions. So it might be things like joining one of the SU societies. So the SU has a lot of different societies. So whether you're into dancing or baking or more academic things, you'll probably be able to make friends easily with people who've got similar interests to you as well by joining a society. You might also be interested in exploring Hatfield or London. 
again usually the dean of students and the su they'll usually do trips so that you can have a bit of a tour of these places which helps especially when it's your first time going there as well you might want to take part in heart squad sports so heart squad put on a lot of events where you can have a go at different sports some of their events are free as well so you can really get a taste of if it's something that you like um, and they also do some things where they'll actually be able to compete against other universities as well so really fun to get involved in and then of course we have the um, SU events at the forum so you might be excited to attend one of those as well um, now, we've had a lot of people fill in the poll, which is brilliant. If you do still want to take part, please submit your answer now because I'll be closing it in just a minute's time as well. But this is brilliant. As I say, it might, might be that some of these things you weren't aware of and you want to read a bit more about them so that you know what to get involved in once you get to hearts as well. Um, almost everybody's taken part, so I am going to end this, the polling just now. And we'll have a look at the answers together. Um, so this is brilliant, really good mix here. We can see a lot of people are interested in joining a society, which is excellent. Usually at the um, first week of freshers, the societies will be available. You can meet them, chat to them and talk about joining as well. Lots of people looking to explore the local area and London and of course take part in those Heart Squad and SU events too. So really great that you've already started looking into these. Now, I'm just going to talk a little bit more about some of the things you can do. Um, so to help you prepare for the start of term, we know that there's a lot of things that you need to think about, including um, your travel. So for some of you, it might be the first time that you've ever traveled outside of your country before. It's going to be quite new. Please don't worry, because um, the International Office, we're going to be hosting webinars similar to this one today, all about pre-departure. So we'll go through things like um, what, what to do in the airport, packing checklists, what you can keep in your hand luggage versus your hold luggage, how to get from the airport to the campus once you land, registration guidance, BRP collection, all things that you'll be wondering about. We'll go through those in these pre-departure webinar sessions for you. Now, we will be hosting those closer to the start of term, so usually around kind of end of July and into August. So keep an eye on your emails and we'll send you an invite closer to the time as well. Um, alongside our pre-departure webinars, we also run a special webinar where you can meet the support teams on campus. So the wellbeing team, Dean of Students, Heart Squad, Finance, you'll be able to meet all those teams in a webinar like this as well, just so you're a bit more familiar with how they work. So if you need support when you're in the UK, you've already had an idea of what they can help you with. Um, and alongside these, we also have our pre-arrival guide. Um, this is going to be updated, especially for the September 2023 intake. It's usually hosted on our website and there's a lot of information in there, as well as the guidance like registration links. There's also a bit more fun information like places that you might want to visit when you're in the UK or some foods that you might want to try as well. So we'll share that out with you once it's been updated as well. Um, travel requirements. Now, we know that some of you, um, you might still be living in places where there are a few COVID rules, but generally around the world, things have been relaxed. Um, but you no longer need to take any COVID tests in order to travel to the UK. You don't need to complete a passenger locator form and you don't need to quarantine when you get here as well. So travel to the UK has pretty much gone back to normal how it was pre-COVID. However, please do check your local um, requirements if your country requires you to do any tests before you get on the plane or if you're doing a transit flight where you go into a different country in between, check their requirements as well just to make sure that you've got everything arranged that you need to. Um, now, Freshers and Orientation Week. So Freshers activities um, that are for the wider universities so not the school specific ones, they'll usually start um, around the main start of term for most courses. A lot of the law courses, as Liz mentioned, do have an early start date. So keep an eye on that and the school activities. And then usually the Freshers activities, which are hosted by Dean of Students and the SU, they'll probably start around the 25th of September. Now, the Dean of Students, they also host 
an orientation week, which is likely to be around the 18th of September, um, where they'll just put on a few extra things as well for you, like um, the trips to the local supermarkets and just a few things as well. So you can start meeting students from other courses on those. So again, keep an eye out on those. They'll be releasing an events calendar closer to the time and we'll link you to that via email as well. But during the Freshers Week, as we've said, you can speak to the Students' Union, meet your representatives there and join some of the societies. Um, you'll also be able to talk about the sports clubs if you are interested in those, meet the Heart Squad team, see what's going on with them. And there'll also be chaplaincy and religious groups. So on campus, on College Lane, we have the Key, um, which is a multi-faith space for all faiths and no faith. And on DHAV, there's also a multi-faith space there as well. But you'll be able to meet our chaplain, Fiona, in that support services webinar that we mentioned as well. Now, some things that you can do now. So alongside clearing all your conditions, so if you haven't already submitted your documents to admissions, please do so. Likewise, if you do have your student ID and your offer, then you can make your deposit payment as well. So get those sent in as soon as you can, just so that you're progressing yourself through your application journey. Um, if you have done those, you can also complete our free online module, which is getting ready to study at Hearts. The university's created this and it's just got a lot of resources in. Um, there's things like how to manage your, your workload effectively, tips on referencing, even things like tips from existing international students, things they wish they'd known before they came to the UK as well. So there's a few video blogs from them. Um, check that out. That is going to keep being updated on the run up to start of term. So just take your time, work through the modules on there. And it'll also get you used to um, how the modules might display for your course as well. So you'll already be familiar with the systems. Also, very importantly, now is the time to be booking your accommodation. So if you haven't already done so or you haven't started looking into this, please do it now. It's really important that you make sure your accommodation is arranged before you travel to the UK. We do still have rooms available in the on-campus accommodation, and that is what we would recommend for our students, especially if it's going to be your first time at Hearts. Um, just because you'll be right next door to your lectures, you've got all that support on campus 24-7 if you need it as well. And also, um, you don't need a UK guarantor if you're living in on-campus accommodation. Um, check out the prices. The utility bills, Wi-Fi and contents insurance are included in those prices as well. So you don't need to look at paying anything extra on top of the room costs. All you'll need to sort out is your food. Now, you can apply for accommodation, um, as we said, with your conditional offer and your eight digit ID. And then you'll actually get your room offer once your deposit's cleared. So if you've got your eye on a particular room type, because there's lots of different ones to choose from, um, then it's good to get your application in early because you're more likely to be able to get your first choice. If you do want to live off campus, um, then please do look at PAL accredited landlords. Now we'll drop the link to the PAL website in the chat for you. But PAL is a scheme that the university has set up with the local council. Um, it's just to make sure that you know a safe place to go when you're looking at off-campus accommodation, because all the landlords on the website have been vetted. If you have to pay any deposit, it's going to be held securely. All the properties are in a good state of repair and they match the photos that you're going to see online as well, because we know that being an international student, you're not going to have a chance to view the properties before you go to them as well. So that's really important. Now, if you are living off campus, you must live within a two hour commute and 30 mile radius from the campus. This is the maximum. I would recommend that you live within walking distance of the campus just because then you're not going to have to worry about paying for train or bus fare. Um, you're not going to have to worry about how busy the bus gets, you know, if you're trying to get in for an early morning lecture. Um, and also with the timetables, if you are traveling at peak time, you need to be aware of that as well, because that's going to cost you a bit more on the rail fares. So this is the maximum guidance. I would recommend live in the Hatfield area because then you can walk to your lectures. Your commute's going to be free um, and also ideally live on campus if you can. 
Okay, now we're just going to watch a short video of some of the accommodation room tours um, from some of our teams that have lived in them as well. Hi, I'm Elizabeth, and today I'm going to show you all of the amazing things of why did I choose to live on College Land campus. First, let's start with my bedroom. It's so close to classes and contains everything that you need. And here's my kitchen, where I get to meet all of my flatmates. However, for larger gatherings, we've got common rooms. Perfect for everything from group yoga to movie nights. And not to forget the oval. It's great to have a team of support staff to help with just about everything. And a gym for those post-lecture workouts. That really is everything you need on campus. Whether you like to go for a walk outdoors, or if you like to get your focus to the max in the RRC. Looking for a quiet space to pray, meditate or reflect? Well, the key is the place to visit. Whatever faith you have or even you have none. Here in the Hutton Hub, you can access to all kinds of information with our Ask Hearts Hub. For the best night out, I definitely visit 77 here at the Forum. Over to you, Judith. Hi everyone, welcome to the Haviland. I'm Judith and I'll be showing you why living here is amazing. The bedrooms are particularly great. You have absolutely everything you need in here. Say hello to the kitchen, where all the cooking and catching up with flatmates happens. In need of support, there's a whole team of staff ready to help here in the accommodation office. And just next door is the common room. Many a games night have been hosted in here. But when you're feeling extra energetic, you can head over to the sports village. It's great to come over after classes to get a workout in at the gym or take a dive in the huge pool. Just like College Lane, this campus has its very own LRC and also the beautiful Cafe Ambition with its great music and even better coffee. So that's a wrap. Thanks for coming along with us. Hope to see you on campus soon. If you do want to see any extra room tours, they are available on the Hertfordshire YouTube page, so you can check those out. The students living in the rooms have done tours of their own rooms, because um, there's lots to choose from, like the studio room where you have your own kitchen and bathroom, or ensuite, or the shared townhouses as well. Um, so please do go and check those out after the session. Now, thank you everybody for waiting. I can see some questions have come through already, but we're gonna to go to Q&A now. So if you have a question and nobody else has asked it, um, now is the time. So use the Q&A button on your screen. Brilliant, thank you so much, Kat. Yes, we have some amazing questions come through. So thank you, everybody. Liz, I've got a question here for you. Um, a student has asked, how will I be assessed uh, within LLM, intellectual property law? Um, and are you able to give us an overview of the kind of general assessment methods used for the law courses? Yeah, sure, absolutely. Both our undergraduate and our LLM courses, bar practice is the exception, are assessed by coursework we're, we're a great believer in what we call authentic assessment on the undergraduate level so we will get students to perhaps draft something or they might do a presentation they might be in the courtroom presenting to a, a judge um, as well as writing the more traditional essays or a case analysis report so a lot of really different styles of coursework based assessments on the LLM, it's it's similar. Uh, we don't have any exams in that sense. Again, it's coursework based, so there might be multiple choice tests. Um, reflecting the fact that it's level seven, we might get them to do a poster presentation or a research proposal. So it's a little it's a little bit more um, academic in many respects because it is a level seven master's course, but again, very much based on um, coursework type delivery. And the precise assessment is always set over the summer. So when students arrive in September, we're completely upfront about what the assessment is for that module and when the assessment dates are. So students will be able to see all of their assessment dates over the course of that academic year, which helps with planning and structuring time. Um, but like I say, will be coursework. We're not gonna spring exams on anybody. The exception is the bar practice program, which is exam based um, and a mixture of skills based assessments because that's set by the regulator. So they're very different, but I'm happy to have that conversation uh, with the bar practice students off offline, so to speak. Brilliant, thank you so much, Liz. 
Kat, so I've got a question here for you. So we've got quite a few applicants um, within the webinar today who have applied, but they haven't heard just, uh, well, haven't heard back just yet, I should say, about their application outcome. Are you able to give them kind of advice on that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, please don't worry if, if you've sent in your application or you've sent in documents and you're waiting for things to be checked. The admissions team is working as fast as they can through everything. Um, I am sorry if you if you have been waiting a little bit and you haven't heard back yet, but please don't worry. Everything does go into a queue and they're working through that as quickly as possible. They'll usually reply to you via email to tell you what the next step is. Um, if you're waiting for an offer, whether they can get an offer to you or if you need to submit anything extra or clarify anything on your academics. Um, but they will be getting back to you as soon as they can. So thank you so much for your patience so far on that. And hopefully it won't be too much longer until you do get a reply. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Kat. Um, and Liz, I've got a question here for you, and I can imagine this question will vary depending on which course someone's undertaking. But um, we've got an applicant who's asked, um, I want to know about the schedule of the classes. So how many lectures will I have each week? Mm -hmm. OK, uh, it's a very good question. So for first year undergraduates, they will have eight hours of scheduled on uh, scheduled face to face seminars. And each one of those is a two hour. So it's basically four blocks. We try as much as we can to put two on one day and two on another day. But obviously that depends as on room availability and staff availability. But we try and condense it. So you have three days to do your online work, to do your preparation and two days to do your study. Uh, for the LLM, it's essentially the same. We, we work on the basis that you have uh, about four hours. You do two modules each semester. Um, on campus and then time around that to do your own independent study. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Liz. Kat, I've got a question here for you. So quite a few um, of the applicants on the webinar today thinking about their accommodation, which is absolutely brilliant. So I've got a few accommodation questions for you, Kat. So one of them is a student said, are first year undergraduates allowed to stay off campus? Um, and then we've got other questions about whether dependents can live on campus and if we'd recommend either on or off campus and which one's more affordable for students. So quite a few questions there, Kat. So sorry. No, that's Brilliant. I'm, I'm glad everybody's thinking about it and doing your research. So that's excellent. So uh, first answer, undergraduate students. Yes, you can live off campus. We do recommend people to stay on campus, whether you're postgraduate or undergraduate, just because of those support networks there and having your bills included, like I said, and not needing the UK guarantor. It just makes it a lot easier for you when you are looking at accommodation that you can qualify for and also you know then you're not going to have your commute now unfortunately those of you asking for dependents dependents can't stay in on-campus accommodation because it's for students only so if you are coming to the UK with dependents and you want to live with those dependents in the UK you are going to have to look at off-campus accommodation now do look at the Hatfield area, check out the PAL website that we mentioned, because that's going to help you and mean that you've got most access to the resources on campus. You can walk to your lectures still. Cost wise, um, you, you do need to, again, do your own research on it. But usually because our on campus accommodation includes things like your utility bills, your Wi-Fi, um, the contents insurance, you don't need to sort out extra things that you might not have thought of, like a TV license for the communal area. You might be surprised at when you start delving into the cost of the OS campus accommodation when it doesn't include that and you take your commute into account. It's actually more cost effective for you to live on campus. Um, check out the prices, though. They are available on the website for full transparency on there. But I, I would always fully recommend people live on campus where you can, just because it's going to be such an easier experience for you. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Kat. Um, and Liz, I've got a great question here from a student. Um, so they've asked, how will I learn about my modules and, and research um, kind of different things about the seminars and find out good references? So I think this person wants to kind of know a bit more information about what they can do to prepare for their studies with us. That's a really good question. So for the undergraduate um program we will send you out joining instructions and in that is a selection of things for you to look at and, and read 
but we we basically just say we don't expect anything it's you know there's plenty of books out there about life as a law student um or a good one that we recommend is the secret barrister um he he writes a number of books they're a bit tongue-in-cheek and a bit um comedic but they're they're quite interesting as well uh, the module descriptions for the what you study on both the LLM and LLB are on the website, so you can read a little bit about what you'll be studying in your first year. For the master's students who choose some elective modules quite quickly, the programme leader will send out um, links to videos. So again, that will come out in August. Um, so it'll be a link to all of the videos about the different options that you can then watch, as well as the form for you to fill in. So you can watch them, choose what you like and um, click the form and send it back to us. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Liz. Um, and Kat, I've got a question here from a student. So they're obviously interested in the different types of activities they can do at the university. And they've said, is there a tennis team at the university that I can join? Yeah, absolutely. There's there's lots of different sports teams. So as we've said through Heart Squad, um, you'll probably find that you, you can get involved in teams. But yeah, there's tennis teams, there's cricket teams. I think they've also got things like netball, volleyball, all sorts of things. I've even seen them um, sort of giving students a go at cycling and rollerblading. So yeah, any any sports you can imagine, usually the teams try and put on something so that you can have a go at it. Um, but yeah, check out Heart Squad. You can actually follow them on Instagram if you want as well to see what they're up to before you start. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Kat. Um, and Liz, I've got another question here for you. So an applicant has said, can I have experience in mediation during my master's degree programme in law? Yeah, absolutely. We run uh, two mediation co-curricular courses that students can sign up for. Um, and you have, the second one you can only do if you've done the first one, but it is available and information will be on that as soon as you arrive. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Liz. And Kat, I can see quite a few of our applicants here asking, when will the university be issuing the CAS letters for the September intake? Um, and how early can students arrive in the UK? Yeah, great questions again. So the university will be sorting out the CAS for people as soon as possible. If you're at CAS stage, so that means that you've cleared all your conditions, your deposits cleared, you've done any extra checks like your finances or your interview, if that's required of you, um, then that means you're at CAS stage, which is brilliant. The admissions team, they'll be sorting out the CAS as soon as possible. When yours is ready, it'll be emailed to you. Um, so keep an eye on your email. Some of our in-country reps, if you've been using them, they can also support you with that. So um, they can make sure that you are at CAS stage and you've sent in everything that you need to do. Um, so, yeah, it, it shouldn't be too much longer before you get yours if you've already cleared all your conditions on there. Regarding um, coming to the UK, so once you have got your visa, it'll tell you on there the dates that you're allowed to travel to the UK between. I think usually you can come to the UK about a month before your course start date so that you can get settled in. But do check your visa for any specifics. Make sure you travel within those dates and make sure that you're here in advance of the start of your course so that you're settled in and you're ready to go. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Kat. Um, and Liz, I've got an applicant asking, is there a January intake um, for LLM available? Uh, there is, yeah, absolutely. So the LLM, excluding the LLM bar practice, has a January intake. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Um, and I've got another question about LLM, Liz. So a student said, I want to know um, about my interview for LLM. Will this be conducted via an audio call or a video call? Is this, I'm assuming this is for the bar practice, as it's the only one we do interviews for. It's a video call. So we tend to use Zoom. Brilliant. Thank you so much for clarifying that. That's great news. And Kat, there's quite a few questions about accommodation, which again is brilliant to hear people are interested in staying on campus and thinking about that as well. So really organised of you all. We love to see that. So a student said, do the rooms come with bedding? Do the kitchens include cookware and utensils? Is there anything that I need to purchase of my own for on-campus accommodation? And also a few people have said, um, you know, is it open for me to apply? What if I uh, miss accepting my accommodation offer what should I do so quite a few questions about accommodation there 
Yeah, no problem. So um, if you have applied for accommodation, but you missed accepting that offer, just contact the accommodation team at accommodation at hearts.ac.uk. Let them know that you had the previous offer and then they'll be able to get a new one issued for you. I think once they've issued an offer for you, you have around 10 days to accept it um, and then that room's secured for you. So keep an eye out for those emails. Um, regarding bedding, so the rooms don't come with bedding because you'll want your own. However, you don't have to travel with bedding. You can actually purchase a bedding pack from the online shop. Again, we'll send you an email closer to the start of term with the link to that on. And then you can just buy a bedding pack, which comes with your duvet, your pillow, your sheets, um, so that you have bedding here and you're not trying to pack that into your suitcase. Um, regarding things like utensils, bowls, cookware items, Again, you, you don't need to travel with these. You do need to purchase your own, but you can get them easily and cheaply from the UK. So, for example, there's a really large Asda supermarket um, in Hatfield. Most of our students can easily get what they need from there. There's lots of choice to choose from um, and it's it's quality for you so that you, you know, it's, it's good to use. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Kat. Um, and Liz, I've got a question here from an applicant and they've said, um, is there any kind of on-campus part-time job opportunities available in particular for law students? Um, and would the university support law students find appropriate part-time jobs as well during their studies? Um, on-campus law jobs are not really, no. <laughs> um, there are plenty of on-campus opportunities for part-time work so one of the ones that we encourage students to get involved in is, is student ambassador uh, which is a nice opportunity to as the name suggests be an ambassador for the university in the school and those students have very close links with the school and come to our events um, our open days and everything else there is um, always the opportunity to get involved with legal work more locally um, and the university careers team will, as well as our own uh, director of employability, will put those opportunities out to students when they do um, arise. Uh, we obviously can't guarantee that there will be legal opportunities, but as soon as we are aware of any, we put them out there for students to apply for and we'll support you in that application as well. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Liz. I and mean, then Kat, we've had quite a few questions about scholarships. Um, are you happy to let us know if any scholarships are currently available? Do applicants need to apply for that or are they automatically reviewed for scholarships when they do apply? Yeah, so we, we have quite a few different scholarships. Um, they're all on our web page, um, which if you just go to hearts.ac.uk, search international scholarships, then it will bring it up in the search results for you. Um, there's a few different ones like our student success scholarship um, or our vice chancellor's scholarship. So you can check out the terms and conditions, see if these apply for you. Most of them you don't actually need to send in an application for. So, um, for example, some of them you might just need to have met certain conditions by certain dates to be eligible. And some of them, the admissions team will actually be reviewing your documents as you send them in. So they'll be looking at your academic achievements, your personal statement, your English language test results. And if they feel that your application stands out, then they'll put you forward for scholarship as well. Um, if you are successful in getting a scholarship, again, you'll get an email confirming the type of scholarship you've been awarded and the amount that you've been awarded as well. Um, and just because I can see there's other questions on it, discounts, there is also um, what you can get as well as the scholarships is there is actually a £500 full payment discount available to all our international students. So if you're in a position to pay your tuition fees in full, by a certain date of registration, you can automatically get an extra £500 on top of anything else as well. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Kat. Kat, do we have time for one more question? Yeah, we'll go for one more question. Thanks, Jess. Oh, brilliant. Thank you so much. Liz, I've got a question for you. Is there an in in particular that you would recommend applicants um, apply for? That's a really good question. Um, Barris is very proud of their inn and uh, we will always recommend the one that we joined. So mine is Inner Temple, um, but my colleague um, is Middle Temple and she will obviously say that Middle is the best for, for in her experience. I would just say, um, look at their website 
websites, look at the information and go with your gut. They, they all offer similar things. They all are obviously have a great training experience for, for, for pupils and for um, junior, well, people on the bar course, for example. Uh, they're all very close to each other. They have slightly different feels. So middle and inner are more, have often been, well, inner has been more contemporary. Middle's a bit more old fashioned. Greys is very, um, very traditional, very popular with certain countries. A lot of Malaysian students join Middle Temple. Um, uh, Lincolns, I'm not too sure on that one myself because I'm not a Lincolns person. But again, I think that's quite popular with Pakistan students. So talk to your colleagues, find out um, what in they have joined, but go with your gut. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Liz. Great advice. Um, thank you so much for your questions, everybody. I'm going to pass back to Kat now. Excellent. Thank you. Um, I'm so sorry, everybody. We're almost at the end of the session. You had some brilliant questions there. Um, if we haven't been able to answer your question live and you still have queries, please do get in touch with our team um, at international at hearts.ac.uk. Um, if you've got an urgent query, you can also contact us via phone as well. We do also sometimes do some Instagram live sessions. So keep an eye out on our channels and then you, you can feel free to come along to those. Here are just some examples of some recent ones that we had. So we had a special one on on-campus accommodation. So if you've still got queries about accommodation, that session is still available to watch on our Instagram channel. So you can feel free to watch that back. And we had proof from accommodation there as well. Or if you want to hear what life is like at Hearts for an existing student, we also had uh, Rishi from India and he shared his story and some top tips as well. So check those out. Um, and as I've said, if you do still have questions that we haven't been able to answer, please do get in touch with our team. We will try and support you as much as possible. So thank you very much for joining us today. Um, we're just going to show one last video for you, just to some sites around hearts. But colleagues, if you do have other meetings, feel free to exit now as well. Um, but thank you so much for joining us today, everyone. And we can't wait to welcome you in September. <laughs>